All right, superstars, our last assignment for the week again is looking at graphs, analyzing them a little bit more specifically. Uh, so we're talking about the rate of change. Remember, rate of change is just a fancy way of talking about the slope. So you might have to identify the slopes for individual portions. You can go off of looks to help you start but not finalize it. Remember, if it looks steeper, that means it's an improper fraction. So that would definitely be a rate of change greater. And, but remember, when we're talking about the rate of change, trying to find the greatest and things like that, we're not really concerned about the negative sign. We're just talking about the actual change per se. What we talked about at the still kind of beginning of the year, October, November or so when we we're looking at graphs is this specific information here. As silly as it may have sound, talking about birds and things like that and temperatures and things like that, it's just talking about the rate of change. So if you notice right here over on Newport, Oregon, we have a decrease and that looks pretty steep. And remember, a steep change is definitely a greater change than a gradual change like here. Uh, so let's say that this may be part A, part B, and part C. So in part B, since it's a constant, there's no change there at all. Horizontal line, remember, is a slope of zero, so there's no rate of change. And then part C, it's going up gradually. So yeah, it's positive, but the rate of change isn't that great. A is decreasing, but again, it's steep. So that would technically have the greater rate of change, just looking at these three parts here. But on your actual assignment, there are some points of data that you would have to use to help you find your rate of change. <clears throat> and if you remember, you could actually, if it was a good graph, you could count the rise over run, but it's most likely not the greatest, so you have to use maybe some data points, some numbers, which is back to our slope formula. The m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which is a, just a fancy way of saying rise over run. In high school, you're also going to see it maybe written just a little bit different called delta y over delta x, where delta is really just talking about the change again, and that's the difference, and that's what we tried sharing with you on the formula. So we've got a way to identify your rate of change visually, but then also specifically looking at the data points. All right, right here, trying to analyze this. Again, this is taken directly from your textbook. It's okay. So we've got a uh, rate of change. Don't know exactly what it is, but it's not too steep until you get to right here. That's a really big rate of change. And then one that's a little bit more gradual. And then the Osprey, that's that fancy fighter jet type bird. It is going to go ahead and change there. It's a decrease and then boom, it dives into the water to try and get to that fish or whatever the case may be. So again, right here is a huge rate of change, big rate of change because again, it is so steep. This one looks relatively steep, not that gradual, but then right there, boom. And then remember, if you needed to, you could use the data points if we give them to you to go ahead and actually calculate the slope. Now, when I had students go ahead and identify which was the greatest rate of change, if you remember, we talked about having it consistent in the form of a decimal. The decimal form is a little bit easier to compare compared to when it's in fraction form. So let's say you had a slope of half. We know that that's going to be equal to 0 0.5. If you have a slope of 2 thirds, and if you don't remember how to do that, that's a little bit 6th grade, 7th grade. You just divide it, and you get 0 0.6 repeating. So technically, between those two, 0 0.6 is greater than 0 0.5. And again, if it had a negative sign, we wouldn't really focus too much on the negative sign. We're just talking about the actual decimals to be able to find the rate of change. So if you have fractions, change them into decimals. Decimals will help you figure it out. Remember, if it's an improper fraction, let's say 3 over 2, that's going to be a decimal of 1.5. And we know that improper fractions are always greater, in this sense here, than proper fractions. Because again, 1.5 is definitely greater than 0 0.6. So use that information to help you out. And again, we're analyzing our graphs, trying to find rate of change and be able to understand that a little bit better. Be awesome.